Bible says it is the spirit that gives life. The flesh is of no avail. It is the spirit that brings life. It is the spirit that leads us and directs us. But the flesh is of no avail. Amen. And so these folks that are fighting against God, they are fighting a flesh battle. And uh, it, it, it can't come to anything according to the word of God. It, there's a condemnation already on the flesh. It says that in Romans 8. It, it, there's a condemnation on the flesh, and that's why God doesn't want us to, to walk in the flesh. But these folks, these people, these special interest groups, and all of these uh, victories that are happening are, are simply flesh victories. And, 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 and so the other night we had to remind ourselves of that. This is a flesh victory. It can't come to anything. The victory that they're celebrating has a death sentence on it. And so we can only pray and intercede for them. Well, it's helpful because we were discouraged. Honest to goodness, it was so hard to stand up in front of that oh. city council. My hand was shaking. I couldn't even read my notes, you know. But we knew it was the right thing to do. And we, mm. we were just cracking the ice and, and following God up That's there, right. you know. And uh, we, 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 we believed that we would appeal to these folks' um, sense of right, fairness, law, legal, constitutional rights. And none of that sort of work. Mm. Because... They are in bondage to the flesh. And that's what the Bible says in Galatians and Romans. That, the, 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 that they're in bondage to the flesh. And they can't do anything else you know, other than what they've done. But there, there is no victory. There's no, there's no victory. But it's really hard mm -hmm. when you're there. Mm -hmm. Because the flesh is the world. And the flesh is telling us that what we're doing won't work. And, 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 mm. and, and our families mm. are telling us what we're doing mm. is not going to work. And what our eyes tell us is that it's not going to oh. work. So everything is against, is against um, the spirit. You know, and that's what we'll get into a little bit tonight in Galatians and, and Romans, uh, that, that the flesh is against the spirit and we're not fighting a carnal war. We're fighting a spiritual war. Right. So as God leads us, um, we need to continue in the spirit. And that's sort of what we knew the other night. But s doing it is harder than... The not. I left there discouraged. Mm. Not because of uh, because of the magnitude of the of, of 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 what I saw, the magnitude of where we're at as a nation and how far we've gone away from righteousness at the local level. We know God's moving on the national level. Mm -hmm. And and last week I saw him moving on the international level, not to jump around, but you know, I have to stay true to what I do and so I jump around and so Trump went Trump went to England and two years ago I was in England and uh, I was walking around in the spirit most most of the time I prayed but it was hard it was quagmire and 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 there were points where God said you know go, go and uh, preach you know go and preach here in, in England and then I had a little bottle of, of, of anointing oil and so I cried to God at Parliament, and I cried to God at Westminster Abbey, and I cried to God at the Methodist, the old Methodist ch churches, and I and I and, and I, I I was compelled to anoint them, and I and I and I um mm -hmm. I uh, put anointing oil down as I as the cab came to pick me up, and I was leaving England for the first time, and I was very sad at what I saw there. I saw a godless nation, and but but yet I saw churches that were historically old, and I knew that men like Spurgeon and, and, and Newton and have been right here. I'm in their shadow. But, but, but where are they? Where's the faith? The first time I got to England, I went in front of a window and I just began to, the spirit gripped me and I began to cry and say, God, where, where did you go? These people don't know you now. And so I heard a sermon in the, in the Metropolitan Tabernacle and, and he, it was a sermon by a minister. I, I was in my room, I was praying for days and and I said, oh, well, Metropolitan's around the corner. I think I'll go to that. And then fear gripped me. And I said, because I saw there was, a, there was a man from Egypt, Muhammad something, he's the new minister. So I thought, Lord, if I go over there and it is given up to, you know, secular humanism and they're, and they're dancing and running around and, 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 and have abandoned the gospel, I'm going to be, I'm gonna be crushed, you know. Because this was the place that God had, you know, used Spurgeon for so many years to preach. So I, I went over there in the rain and I was just really, uh, you know, afraid of what I was going to find. And I sat down 
and um, and uh, <clears throat> you know, and then I heard the clicking of the heels when they said, "Turn to hymn number one ninety two and 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 the whole congregation got up, and it was like mm, being in heaven. Mm -hmm. I never heard anything like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Turn to page one ninety two whatever, and you heard the hymnals you heard the pages clicking, and then you heard cl cl a loud clicking of. And then you just heard everybody and collectively looked around and it was just people from the hood and people from the neighborhood. But yet it sounded like angels and they were singing 300-year-old songs in this old tabernacle. Mm -hmm. So I said, I, I God, I think the gospel's still here. You know, I, mm -hmm. but I, you could, you know, you, I was just like sensing it like, is this still real? Is the gospel still alive in England? Um, because I had been to some other churches where it was just like, wow. What's going on here? Um, what was happening in the church wasn't commensurate, commensurate with what was happening on the streets. They were singing about victory in the churches of Spain, but when you went out on the streets, there was no victory. And so God had given me a little thing to say tonight, and it was this. Open your eyes wide and then pray. Mm. Open your eyes wide and then pray. Don't pray with closed eyes. Don't pretend that the world's not broken. Don't pretend not to see the brokenness in yourself. God says, open your eyes wide and then pray. See what you're going to see and then come to me because then you have something to pray about. And when we left the courtroom the other night, we did have something to pray about. It was a heavy burden. I shamefully didn't go to God. I ran away. And so tonight we're going to, you know, look at that. But I'm here and back again and, you know, that's, that's what we do. And, um, and so when this preacher preached in England, he preached. And I heard things in him. I like to read this, uh, uh, Spurgeon uh, uh, sermons. And when he preached, I could hear things that Spurgeon mm -hmm. said. So I know he was eating and feeding on that food. This minister, I, you know, you had a sense of flavor. It's Spurgeon has flavor. Mm -hmm. And he was the secondary guy. He wasn't the main guy. Wow. The main guy is cool. He comes out. He's like, oh, welcome. And he's, he's been there for 45 years. Wow. I love this guy. <laughs> and so um, the first guy preached. And then he said something profound things but what he said was in the end there's a verse in the bible that says prove me says the lord bring your case to me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. so i walked out in the rain and i stood outside of metropolitan tabernacle and i was crying out to god i said i said god you know what what can i say to you to win back this <clears throat> nation what you put a burden on my heart for this place that has forgotten you and what can i possibly what can I possibly say to you that's going to convince you to, 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 to bring revival back to England? Mm -hmm. Then God said, he told me, he, he just impressed upon me. And, and I, I had to run back in the church and, and get that minister. I said, I know why God should save England. I, I, I know why. Can I tell you? And the minister's just like looking at me because I was outside and I was praying. And, and, and I said, I would tell God to do it for Jesus' sake. Amen. Amen. Powerful. Amen. Do it because Jesus deserves this nation. That's why, God. How can you turn me? How can you, how can you deny my petition? It has nothing to do with me and my prayers and what That's I want. That's right. Do it for Jesus' sake. So then I walked down in the rain to these places like Parliament, you know, where great men like John Owens had preached. And God told me to anoint them. And I just anointed them quietly. No one saw anything. I just anointed them and prayed. And then I left on the airplane. And two, and last week when I saw what was going on in England, and I saw Trump, and I saw the Queen had embraced Trump, and, and, and they were talking about, you know, things... And there was an old flavor, and then they went to Normandy, and they and they uh, they they both sat side by side, and she received him as a, as a son because he's strong, and, and and there's no strength in England, there's no leadership. Anyway, when I saw that, I was super encouraged, and that's what I wanted to come here and tell you first. Like, wow, you know, you know, God is moving, God is moving in England. And anyway, so open our eyes wide. It's, it's a fleshly battle. And uh, today I, I just want to go to, uh, I want to go to um, 1 
1 Kings chapter 19. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to read. Because Elijah in chapter 18 had a showdown with these false prophets of Baal on Carmel. And, and, and God brought fire down. And, and Elijah was full of faith. And sometimes we win. And then other times we run away in discouragement. And so those are the two natures of the Christian. The, the flesh and the spirit. And so uh, chapter 19. I just want to read this. If you're there with me. It says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets the false prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. She's going to kill Elijah. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. Elijah, one chapter back, he wasn't running from anyone. Now he's running for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and he came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And he said, It is enough now, Lord. Take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under a juniper tree. He was completely discouraged. After walking in the spirit, he, uh, he fell into discouragement. So he's laying there and he slept under this tree and behold, the angel touched him and said, arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. This journey is too great for thee. And he rose and did eat and drink and he went in <clears throat> in the strength of that meat for 40 days. And 40 nights unto Horab, the place where God opened up the rock and gave his people water the mount of God and he came there unto a cave and he lodged there and behold the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him what are you doing here Elijah and he said I have been very jealous for the Lord and for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant they've broken down your altars they've slain your prophets with the sword and I even I am the only one left and they are now seeking my life to take it away so this was Elijah's perspective After, you know look it's useless I'll go on but my brother said to me today I have a new older brother in Arizona he said man I admire what you're doing but it's useless <laughs> he said I was a mayor in, Jer in New Jersey and you know I was a Republican mayor and I tell you, California, you know, maybe if you were going up in front of council of these conservative states, but he said, mm. I think ah. we're done. You know, he's not a Christian guy, but he was a, he was a mayor who was involved in politics all his life, and he, he had to get off the phone with me because he was a, a Vietnam vet. He went into Vietnam. He saved guys on his back. He fought for this country, and now he says, man, I appreciate I see what you're trying to do here, but, you know, it, it's over. Yeah. So in the flesh, mm -hmm. it is over. That's good. In the flesh, it's over. And through Elijah, it was over. He was Ooh, that's good. so outnumbered. Open your eyes wide and then pray. See the problem. See the trouble. Go there. Wake up and see it. I was really encouraged that Pastor Gary had come down there, but we had invited him to come. And so there were some pastors there, and there were some pastors for the other side, and saying, okay, let's, and there was wickedness. And there were people who gave themselves these gender names, and it was like, open your eyes wide. And, and when we opened our eyes wide, we were very discouraged. 
And when we actually went up, you know, it's one thing to write a nice sermon when you're home and the air conditioner's on and Amazing Grace is playing. They're like, yeah, I'm going to tell them this and tell them that. Right, right. And then you go up there and you can't even hold your phone because you're shaking because this is the flesh. But when God is propelling us in the spirit, there was nothing that of a flesh plan to go there and to do, you know, we were just trying to, but when you walk there, you realize the magnitude of, yeah. of, of how far we we're buried. It's like it snowed and we're, you can't, I'm from back east and there were times where you wake up in the morning. I remember one morning before Sophia was born and <laughs> what, name, what year were you born? 81. 81, okay, so 77, right? <laughs> so I woke up, opened my door and the snow is up to here. And you ain't getting out. I mean, you just need wow. to figure it out or wait a couple days. But that's the feeling you have now when you go. When you say we, we are we are snowed in. We are absolutely like Elijah. We are absolutely uh, buried here. Um, uh, and, and 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 yet there's still churches and Christian people who have their eyes closed. But yet they're praying. But they're not really praying according to the commensurate with the problem, right? So if you think the problem's a, a two, and it's really a 10, and you're praying that God will heal a two, but you need to open your eyes and see that it's a 10, then you can pray to God and, and say, this is a 10. So when we left that place the other night, it's like, this is a 10 plus, this is a wow. You know, we had to pray wow. and walk in the spirit. But I went home and, you know, I just, I just, I didn't take the burden to God. But that was the exact time to take the, the, the burden to God. And that's what God showed me this week was that's when mm -hmm. you need to come. Amen. But the tendency is to wiggle out of that spot and do what Elijah did and just find a juniper tree and mm -hmm. get some water and some food mm -hmm. and bake some cakes and like, mm -hmm. you really don't want to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And then when God says what's wrong, you say, man, it's done. You know, the city council sold out, and, 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 you know, and God says, good, I wanted you to tell me what, I wanted you to come clean and tell me, open your eyes now, oh, tell me what the problem was. And Elijah was seeing it according to the flesh, mm -hmm. but it's understandable, we're flesh creatures. Mm -hmm. And so God said to me, and I'm really broken up about it, that like really, have, you should have came to me that night. There could have been a breakthrough that night. Mm -hmm. You could have brought that burden to me. But instead, you sort of wiggled out of it, you know, and, and, and said, oh, it's too hard, it's too much. I, I need a couple days to think about this. But, but that's what, it's what it means to open your eyes and, 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 and then pray. And, or, like, it's just like seeing your own sinfulness. Right. Sometimes you see your own sinfulness and you're like, ah, oh, and you run away. And, and you don't, instead of saying, you saw that, God? I, I, this is why I need you. This is what I, this is why... And, and, and that's when God can move. Amen. And that's when, when I was preaching in front of St. Martin's in England, in front of the National Gallery, that's what God told me as I was watching the gay flag on that Anglican church and the bells ringing. And I looked around and I'm like, what's wrong? And I'm like, the church is not seeing the problem and, 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 are, and are working on a, 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 a formula that works in church. It does. It really does. You go there, you sing your songs, you put the handle back and you walk out. But when you walk into the real world with unbelief and, 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 and atheism and, and, and darkness and foulness and perversion and all these things, you better have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that's where God wants you to stand in the midst of it. And that's what happened in Genesis when when, or, or sorry, Exodus 15, when, when, when the people saw that the waters were polluted. Uh, 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 very interesting. I want to get back into that. But this week I opened it up and, 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 uh, and um, the people grumbled. They said, Moses, the water's polluted. You brought us here and we can't drink this stuff. So they grumbled to Moses and then the Bible says in the next verse, then Moses cried out to God. And when Moses cried out to God, God showed Moses a branch. And Moses picked it up and put it in the water, and the waters became clean. So when I read that again this week, it was like, wait a minute, look at that, look at that breakdown. The people were thirsty, but they, they didn't cry to God. They didn't ask God. They just cried, they grumbled to Moses. So they got, they got no resolution. They just walked in the flesh. And, they, and, they, and he said, Moses, you know, you, 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 you got to fix our problem. And then Moses 
he said, I'll be back. And he went and cried to God. Amen. And then God sh showed him the branch, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that's walking in the spirit. Moses walked in the spirit. Amen. And when we did that sermon, I didn't see that before. But this week I saw it. And, and it's like Moses went to the spirit, but the people went to the flesh to get their answers. And they didn't get them. And God was angry at them sometimes when they said, man, we want quail. What else is on the menu? And, and God was mad at that because they were walking in the flesh. And God had brought them out just to say, look, trust me, I'll give you everything you need. But, but they didn't do that because they, they didn't walk in the spirit. They walked in the flesh. But Moses walked in the spirit Amen. most of the time. And God responded and gave them the answer. So the, the, the lesson is when your eyes are open and you see the problem and you're thirsty and you're bitter and, and, and you're losing the battle, we, we, we have to stay there with God and say, now is when I need the gospel. Mm -hmm. Now when the, when, the, when the junkie is, you know, where the rubber meets the road, the gospel will work. Amen. But if you keep Amen. it out of the, where it really Amen. can, if you keep it out of the bitter pool, out of the dirty pool, it can't, it can't really work. Mm -hmm. So our tendency is just run away when we really get to that place. Instead of saying, God, now is when I really need, really need you. And I did it just the other day, so my flesh just did it too. Mm -hmm. And like, what? I missed an opportunity. I was, felt like, wow. Mm -hmm. And that's what the church is not, that's sort of why we're not finding victory right now because we're still sort of, we're still sort of not bringing the real problem, the real wound to Christ. We're just bringing a, a cleaned up version of the wound, you know. Maybe if we drink or we do things or this or that or whatever, then we clean up and we go to church and we sort of have, you know, confess. But we're not really, we're not saying, God, I, I don't need you Sunday as much as I need you Tuesday. I need you to step back four days into my really crooked week. And that's where I need the gospel. And that's, God, and that's why we're being healed on Sunday, but not a Tuesday's problem. Because we're not taking Tuesday's problem to the Lord. I'm not. And so that's... Anyway. So then, well, that matters. Like, it really matters. That was really a truth for me. It was like, okay, I get it. I see why that's not working. And I see why what I should do. I should have ran to you that night. And I should have said, God, this is, this right. is more that's than... Right. Well, we can't even, what should we do, Lord? And, and I would have done what Moses did and said, God, what should we do? And God would, I know he would have said, here's a branch. Here's a branch. Here's what to do. Um, so, so, so Elijah said, I've been very jealous for the Lord. I've cared about the things of God. But, but the prophets are dead. The altars are broken. America's a mess. California, how's it going? God, I did care. I had a burden. So this is Elijah saying, I cared about Israel. Like, and, and now, like, look at it. So he, he was just caught up in the, in the reality of the moment. But that was okay because that was, you know, that was where he was at. And God wanted to meet him there. And, and, and God said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind uh, rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. Verse 11. But the Lord was not in the wind and after the wind and the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Verse 12. And the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the evening in the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord because the children of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant thrown down thine altar and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, am left here, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go and return on the way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when, you, when thou comest, anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. God had a plan. And Jehu, the son of... See, God had a plan. Amen. And Jehu, the son of... Nimshai shall thou anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of 
Shepat and Abed Mehola shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room, and it shall come to pass that um, that him that escapes the sword of Hazio shall Jehu slay, and him that escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah slay. And here's the finishing verse. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel. I have left me. Mm. I have left me. Mm. I am sovereign God, he said. Mm. I have left me 7,000 men in Israel. All of the knees which have not bowed down to the rainbow flag. Mm. Look, if the rainbow flag was the mark of the beast, Mm -hmm. most of us would already be have the mark. We've accepted it like, cool, just, it flowed in like a flood and nobody thought, it, 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 it's, mm-hmm. if it was the, everybody's looking at a microchip, but, but what if it was the rainbow flag? We will already have been marked, side thought. So, so, you, we just, open your eyes, open our eyes, God open our eyes. God has 7,000 men which have not bowed the knees to Baal, and every mouth that, that has not kissed him, and so God has his people. And when we were at the um, event, uh, we saw some of his people, right? There were people that got up there with great poise and great dignity and great calmness. And they just presented their case. And they just said it. And we didn't know they were going to be there. But God had, has his people there. And so it's us that get discouraged. So it was Elijah that got discouraged. And he didn't know God's plan, but God here laid out his plan. But Elijah just was running like, I, you know, he didn't know the plan. He didn't think God had a plan, and he just mm-hmm. gave in to discouragement. And that's what I did the other day, and that's what, that's what, you know, I thank God, because now I can talk about it and share what happened. And, um, and uh, mm-hmm. the magnitude of where we've gone in 30 years, when I talked to my brother today, I was like, he said, yeah, I was a Republican back in the, you know, I, I was a mayor, I had city council, I, you know, I, I, I picked my cabinet. It took me a long time to find the right people. And then we went after change. Then we tried to pass and map resolutions that were good for the community. So it was a process back then in the 80s and 90s, you know, but they were holding the fort, they were holding the line. And now from this guy's perspective, you know, it's over. So anyway, it's not over. That's right. But that's right. We can't minimize how bad the problem is, the magnitude of it. It gives us something to really pray about. I mean, now I want to just go to Romans quickly because I think this is related. Romans eight, and then Galatians four, and then we'll pray. Um, Romans eight. We were in the other day. And um, this is a we covered verse one to four, um, verse five. For they that are in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Fleshly business is fleshly business. That's all that the flesh mind. Mm-hmm. The unconverted man perceives not the things of the of the spirit, for they are folly to him. And the cross of Christ is folly to those that are perishing. So, the, so, the, so those that are in the flesh have no other option but to, but to do fleshly things. And that's what we're up against. We can't expect the flesh to do what's right. Mm. I know. So that's, they're, they're, bound, they're bound to do it in a contract of, 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 of condemnation and death. Um, for to be carnally minded is death. And, uh, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Here's God speaking to us like he was speaking to Elijah and telling us, don't walk in the flesh. Don't worry about Jezebel, okay? I have a plan here to anoint other people. I, uh, trust me, you know, God has a plan. And um, we know that he has a plan to save us in this nation. And we're crying Amen. out to him. Amen. And we know that it doesn't have to make logical sense right. or Republican sense. That's right. Or, you know, actually, 
in God's economy, I believe he would rather have it be an impossible situation that he rescues right. us from. Amen. Because then he gets all the glory for it. And and, 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 and and we're going there again. The church has been in these places before, and we're going there again where we're going to lose all of our formulas and ideas of how to right. rescue ourselves. And we're going to run like Elijah, and, God is, and God's going to see us crying on some rock. And God's going to begin to... To give us the answers Amen. in, in, that, in Amen. that humility base and, and, in the, and, you know, and in his mercy base. To be carnally minded, again back to these groups, is death. So Amen. to fight for these things, sure, you may get the victory, you may get it, but you're battling for, death, for things that are already under the condemnation of death. Mm. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. When we prayed at that flagpole, we definitely had peace, right? You could feel the Spirit of God, and it was just, here we are, Lord, we're trying to walk in the, in the Spirit. Because the carnal mind is, is at war with God. It, it, the, these folks, the wickedness in them is, 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 is really a, a, a problem. So verse 8, so they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now we'll go to Galatians, because this I thought was very interesting. And it's Galatians chapter um, 4. So, and it's, um, okay, so I just want to go to verse 3 real quick as a general reference, and then we'll go over to 23, okay? So when I read this, I was like, what does that mean, Lord? Galatians 4, last night. Even so, when we, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. Um, so even we were in bondage under the elements of this world. In the flesh, we were in bondage. So Paul's saying here that you were also in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Before God saved you, you were in the flesh and you were under the... The, the, the bondage under this world, the same bondage that they're under now. Okay? So now, we go over here to, um, let's start at 23. Um, speaking of the spirit in the flesh. For it is written that Abraham had two sons. One was of a bondmaid, that's the flesh. The other was of a free woman, that's the spirit. Okay? So, Paul says, verse 23, but he that who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh and he of the free woman was of the promise now Paul says these things are an allegory mm -hmm. for these are two covenants and one from Mount Sinai which genders to bondage which is Agar that's the flesh covenant. That's the one that's under the law. That's the one that's condemned. It is it, uh, 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 from Mount Sinai where the law came from. That is the flesh covenant. And this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and answers to Jerusalem, which now is in bondage with her children. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. For it is written, Rejoice, thou barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travails not. For the desolate has more children than she that has a husband. Now we, brethren, as Isaac was, are the children of the promise, the spirit. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, those who walk in the spirit are the children of Abraham and of the promise but as then he was born after the flesh persecuted him that is born after the spirit even so it is now nevertheless what does the scripture say verse 30 cast out the bondwoman and her son for the son of the bondwoman shall not inherit or be an heir with the son of the free woman it's saying that the flesh cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and that, and that the, uh, the our flesh, it, 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 it can it, it can inherit the promises, 
So the covenant of the flesh is, 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 is under bondage um, and, and, and it can't inherit the kingdom of God. And so this gave me hope this week that, that, that our opposition, mm-hmm. it says that they, they oppress us. The, the, um, it says that they persecute, the, the flesh persecutes the spirit. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. It's in verse um, 29. Mm-hmm. But, but the, those are the born after the flesh. Persecute them which are after the spirit. Even so it is now, said Paul. So those in the flesh, those flesh camps, those flesh agendas, those groups that are operating in the flesh, they persecute the, the spirit. They persecute those that walk in the spirit. The flesh is after the spirit. And so that gave me some hope this week to understand that it's a battle. Now the second thing is here, and, and then we're, I think we're done. Rejoice, you barren, that bear not and break forth and cry and travail. For the desolate has many more children than she which has a husband. So here's the takeaway, that right now the world and the flesh have their children they have their, but we have to wait for ours. Mm-hmm. So you are barren, mm-hmm. but your hope is in God, and, and the seed is in God, and, 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 God's, and God's kingdom is, is, in, is in the spirit. So right now we're barren, we're traveling, and they have children. Mm-hmm. And so that's what our flesh sees. Where's my children? She's got children. The flesh has got children. Look, they're, 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 they're prospering. But God said in Psalm 37, fret not because of the wicked. Yes. Fret yes. not yourself because of the wicked. One day you'll look for them and they'll be gone. Amen. So, Amen. you know, yeah. it, it, it's, it's just that we have to get our focus. And these scriptures help me. Amen. I love Paul. I love Galatians. I love Martin Luther. I love the legality of Galatians. But this is deep. Mm-hmm. This chapter 4 is Paul saying allegorically. And, 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 and that verse in, in Romans 9, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. We don't have to deal with that. But, but Esau was the flesh. And what God is saying there is, I don't love the flesh. I'm not blessing that covenant. I'm blessing, the, I'm blessing my son. I'm blessing Esau. That, that's what it means. Because here he's saying it about Isaac. I, you know, one persecuted the other. But Isaac, the covenant will, will be in. So you and I are in, a, are in a spirit covenant. And God knows what he's doing. Amen. Even though we get discouraged. But we have to wait for ours. Amen. And they get, it, they get to have it now. And so that's where the discouragement mm-hmm. comes in. Because they win mm-hmm. now. Seems like. It seems like it. Mm-hmm. And that's why that's why the prayer, mm-hmm. why does the wicked prosper? Mm-hmm. Why do they prosper? That's what they were chanting after. We won. We won. Mm-hmm. So they won, you know, the, and so <laughs> there's the battle, <laughs> and that's what we need yeah. to pray for. And, and if we walk in the Spirit, we are children of Abraham, we are pregnant. We are in travail, and God will give us children like he gave to Rachel. Give me children, or I die. Give me Scotland, he said, Mm -hmm. or I die. Mm -hmm. And so we are in travail now, but they have theirs now. Jesus said, woe to you that are full now, for you will hunger. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Mm -hmm. for they shall see God. So we just need to open our eyes. God says, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. Mm-hmm. I'm always surprised, especially after I have a rough week in the flesh, that God, when I go to my knees, God still gives me something. Amen. Yesterday I'm like, he's not going to give me nothing now. Oh, God, this is... <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say. Maybe I'll just take two hours and show my hymn book. <laughs> I'll slow down a little. I'm not spurging. But then, you know, then he gave me... Amen. He gave me a, 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 you know, a word through my own. And last night I was so excited when I was like, wow, there's the flesh children. And the whole courtroom was divided, right? The flesh was over here and the spirit was over here. And those council members favored the flesh. They catered to them and said, we don't want to upset you. Meanwhile, the Christians were like, what about us? Yeah, yeah, what about, I'm here. I shush, you know. We're like, what about our children? We want children. We want righteousness. We want laws. We got a flag. And so, 
It's the Spirit that gives life. And that can only happen as we follow God and say no to the flesh. But the church has to realize the magnitude of where we're at. And I was glad that Gary went, and I'm glad that other people went, and I was like, wow, this is rough, and we got to face this reality. And when realities get tough in our life, that's when God really wants to whisper His plan in our heart and then have us really believe it instead of coming up with an alternate That's right. and running away and missing the opportunity to have God answer us in the hour of need. And that's the problem today. It's hard to stand vulnerable before God. I mean, you see, Elijah was like, you know, just, just a mess. And God said, look, I've got my people. I've got a plan. It's you that... It's you that are walking in the flesh, and that's mm-hmm. why you're feeling this way. Mm-hmm. And you know, and so that's the Amen. confession. And so wow, God, that's good. God is working, and and and, mm-hmm. and and what I love is that it doesn't have to do with this generation. God's promises to restore and do, and and you know, it has to do with His covenant to Jesus Christ and His covenant to the to Abraham, Isaac, and He said to Abraham, you know. Uh, I'll make your children as the stars of the sea. What if a generation was the stars of the sea? Thank you. Uh, You You combine the two. Yeah. (laughs) All in heaven. The stars of the sky. Star fishes in the sea. Star kisses in the sea. That's what you meant. Charlie Charlie the tuna. Oh my goodness. (laughs) So, but it's because of God's faithfulness to these men. And, and that's why I was in England, too. I said, I was whispering to God in prayer, if you won't do it for us, if you won't do it for this generation, would you do it for Tyndale? Mm. Would you do it for Tyndale? Yeah. Would you restore England? Because it's bad over there. I opened my eyes. I went over there. I was so discouraged last year. I was in the middle of a gay pride parade, and the cops even were celebrating. They all had flowers on, and it was like the mayor was, uh, and Muslims, it was like, it was like, it's a flesh circus over there. Mm-hmm. There's no order. Mm-hmm. And so I just believed that if I walked in God's steps That's right. with some order, it would just be like, you know, a little crack of That's right. a, a, a belief, a little, a little, a little life. Um, like in Milan, when I told the man, it was just people were just laughing and the Muslims were screaming in my ears. And a reporter said, you really think you're doing any good? And I said, I don't know, but... I'd rather stand with God than, mm. than stand in that old life that I used to stand in. I'd rather be here getting made fun of preaching the gospel. Yeah. Even if it doesn't right. do anything, mm-hmm. I feel like I'm standing with God now. I believe I'm standing with God. And so, yes, I, I, I believe it's doing some good. It it's doing some good yeah. for me. Yeah. But, but walking in the reality <laughs> when you can't see it is walking in the spirit. And it won't make sense. How many people got saved? Saved? They didn't even listen to me. Well, somebody threw a, a tomato at me. What, what, <laughs> how were the results today? That, that's what they always ask you. Right. And I'm like, I, you know, I, could, I couldn't actually tell you because I just wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't bring my clicker. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I did believe that it mattered in the spirit. And I do believe that it mattered to yeah. Antioch. And I think that Amen. the people heard us Amen. and were praying for what to do next. And so yes. and so it's just got to be God showing us every step of the way what to do. And, and it won't be our way. And, uh, mm-hmm. and when we get discouraged in our flesh and in our battles, we're not alone. But we bring it back to God and God gives us uh, what to pray for. So the battle is fierce. Amen. I just got to tell you closing. It is fierce. Right. And it's, it's ramping up so exponentially. It is ramping up right now. There's, Illinois just signed this thing uh, that the, 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 the worst heartbeat, the, the worst you can kill a kid in Illinois now for any reason that, may, that that governor signed. Did you see that? Illinois mayor just signed it. Worse than what New York did. He said, I'll double down and do worse. You can, we want unrestricted abortion for any reason and anyone can do it and, and just come here and, and, and this is what we're doing. So, I mean, the devil's standing up and saying, I'm, I'm driving this bus. So... What do you mean? So there's, how is it worse? I'm just curious. Do you know? I think there was some, maybe some restrictions on the New York one. And this guy says, there's no restrictions. You want an abortion day one, day, you know... After the baby. After, whatever you want. It's not an abortion. That's 
it's yeah. it, it, yeah. You know, and then Gavin Newsom says, dude. just come to California, we'll take care of you. What, I wanted, what we wanted to say to the council members, if we ever get another chance, was look around Antioch and see the brokenness that's here and, 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 and ask yourself, is God blessing what, what were these, these resolutions that have been falling off of our desk? Is God really blessing it? No. We have to go the other way before God will begin to heal the communities and, and the nations. Righteousness has to come in. That's right. Otherwise, but they can, they can think, they said, they said to us, thank God that we're now 30 years ago. Thank God that we're progressive. Thank God oh. that, that, right, Sophia? They said, they said, we're so glad that we've all got an open mind. I want to say, well, look at the last 30 years and look back to when you, when right. you had a narrow mind and how good things were. And now that you're open-minded, your brains are falling out. That's right. <laughs> there's, That's actually there's, right. There's, there's nothing, and the town's broken, and, and everything's wrong. And so you should add, this should add to that, but it doesn't add in our mind. They see themselves as just winning and doing and being progressive, when really it's, it's, it's producing horrible fruit. And everywhere where there's, where there's anti-God agendas, it produces immediate horrible fruit and, and, and brokenness. And, and, and that's what will be in the wake of this of this ungodliness. And so, Lord, we thank you. And uh, sorry if it went too long, God. But, but Lord, we just uh, Lord, forgive me, forgive the church, God, forgive us for running away from our wound, God, and, and not really um, bringing the real troubles to you, God. And we see that people who do bring their real troubles, the prisoners, the the um, heroin addicts, God, and. And, and the people that you save, that, that, that you save in the midst of their sin, they, they truly know um, the desperation of the flesh and, and they truly cry out to you for deliverance. And, and Lord, you truly do miracles in that venue. But the church, by and large, has not cried out to you, God. Uh, as, as worse as it's getting out there now, it doesn't even appear that there's many uh, more prayer meetings that are started. And, and we, we should be on our knees and we should be praying, God, and we should be crying out and the churches should be open and they should be advertising. Mm -hmm. Come every night. Amen. You know, let's just start just start coming and we'll just start talking to God and praying. They're, 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 not, they're not praying and walking in a commensurate um, application to the sins of the world and the brokenness that's even upon us. Lord, it's like the Philistines are here, but no one even knows it. And so, God, we ask that you'll open our eyes to our our ailments and, and open the church's eyes to the true ailments of the world and let them begin to pray in that venue, God, not in a false venue where they're just praying up uh, um, joy and happiness and, and victory dances, God. That's not, that's not the intercession, intercession of running between the dead and the living that Aaron did. God, help us to intercede now. God, Thank you for bringing us here as a body. Thank you for everybody that's here, God. We pray that you'll lead us tonight in intercession prayer. Forgive us our weaknesses, God. Forgive us where our flesh has become discouraged. And thank you for speaking to Elijah and showing them that you had a plan. God, this is not up to the church to win this battle. It's up to us to sur submit to your plan and submit to your righteousness and to ask you for your plan and to lay down our own. And Lord, we just pray that you'll lead us tonight in prayer. God, help this broken city. Lord, heal this mayor. Heal this these Amen. council members. Open their eyes to the brokenness all around them, God. And may that they have heard some of the gospel teachings and some of the things that were said about your son. God, save this country. Teach us how to pray. Lead us this night, we ask in Jesus' name.